Hello graduates, proud families and friends, and Kent State University College of Nursing faculty and staff. I am Dr. Wendy Umberger, Associate Dean for Graduate Programs in the College of Nursing. Ordinarily, we celebrate convocation together each spring face-to-face -face in the Kent Student Center Ballroom. While we will miss this opportunity to extol your accomplishments in person, we want to make sure that the tradition continues. It is thence my honor to welcome you to our virtual 2021 graduate convocation. Now is a time of celebration, a time to celebrate all the hard work that got you to this moment. Now is a time of thanks, a time to thank those who helped you get here, nurtured you, cheered you on, and dried your tears. Now is a time of reflection, because today marks the end of one era of your life and the beginning of something new. On behalf of President Todd Diacon, Senior Vice President and Provost Melody Tankersley, Interim Dean Denise Sheehan and the entire Kent State community, congratulations to each of you, especially to the awesome graduates of academic year 2020-2021. We are very proud of you and wish you every happiness and success as you take the next step in your professional nursing careers. At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker and Kent State University alum, John Master John III. John is Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at Hospice of the Western Reserve in Cleveland, where he has served since September 2019. Prior to joining Hospice of the Western Reserve, John was Chief Operating Officer at National Hospice and Palliative Care, where he held a variety of roles after joining the organization in 2006. John has a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from the University of Akron and holds a Master's of Science in Nursing and a Master's of Business Administration degree from Kent State University. Following graduate school at Kent State University, he worked first at Hospice of the Western Reserve and then at Summa Health System as the founding director of Hospice and Palliative Care Services. During the 2004-2005 academic year, he served as a Fulbright Fellow in Hungary, focusing on end-of-life care development. Throughout his career, he has been dedicated to healing, teaching, and advocating for patients and their families. He currently serves on the board at Grace House Akron and on the advisory board for Global Partners in Healthcare. Please welcome John Master John III. Greetings, graduates and family. It's an incredible honor for me to share my thoughts with you today and to celebrate a group of individuals who worked hard to achieve a milestone. A milestone of which not only they can take great pride, but you can as well. As we all know, it certainly takes a village, and though they achieved the degree, it was likely not done in isolation. I am confident they would agree there is a debt of gratitude to those who supported them along the way, and I thank you too. Though it was many years ago, it seems like yesterday that I earned my graduate nursing degree from Kent State University. My partner, my parents, my sisters, and my mother-in-law were all there. We celebrated together, and I remember the incredible pride I felt for having achieved something I never thought I would or could. Little did I know then how much my career, in fact, my whole life would change, and in only a few short months. But before I share my story, I'm gonna congratulate you all on your incredible achievement. I was proud of my own accomplishments and those of my peers, but we never graduated during a pandemic. I can't begin to conceive of the challenges you faced over the past year. Please take time to savor the pride in your achievement. Nurses have long been my heroes, but never more than today. The obstacles you've had to overcome, 
the barriers put in your way are far greater than they've ever been. And what you've been able to accomplish, despite it all, is nothing short of amazing. As you know, nurses have been at the forefront of the pandemic, doing all they can for others. Indeed, some have made the ultimate sacrifice, while many persevere today and every day to comfort and to heal. I don't know what your role in the pandemic may be, but I want to thank you for the sacrifices you've made, for the lives you've touched, and to express appreciation for those who, for whatever reason, couldn't or didn't know how. Thank you for everything you've done. Like many things in life, we never planned for this. We never thought that we would be experiencing life in a pandemic, but here we are. Little did we know how profoundly it would change our lives and all of those around us. The change has been extreme and will no doubt be lasting. And change is just part of what I want to address today. What I would like to share with you is what I've learned from my career. My learning that has come mostly from those who are living, but not for long. Those who know what others can only learn when it might be too late. My most valuable lessons have been taught by those who never earned a teaching degree, but through experience have taught me the most important lessons of all. The hospice patients who've had months, not years, to live. Who had the opportunity to reflect on and think about the most important things in life. And this is what I've learned so far. Change is inevitable. Compassion and kindness are critical. And optimism is essential. First, change is inevitable. As I reflect on my graduate school experience, I remember early on when I decided to enroll and pursue an MSN in the hopes that when I graduated, I'd have the opportunity to become the Director of Emergency Services in the emergency department where I was working. However, within months of graduation, I left the ED and I never looked back. My carefully executed plan never came to fruition. Though it might sound overly dramatic, my graduate experience at Kent was life-changing. I had great support from fellow students, my advisor, other faculty, and preceptors. They were there to listen, to guide, and believe in me, and help shape my career. Shortly after graduation, I took a position as the AIDS team leader at Hospice of the Western Reserve, the hospice program where I had done a clinical rotation as part of my MSN. By nature, I am not a risk taker, and leaving the ED and starting over was a huge surprise to everyone I knew, including me. I share this with all of you because it's my hope that as graduates, you will be open to the many things before you. Oftentimes, we're taught to have a career plan, to consider, develop, and execute a carefully crafted plan in order to have a fulfilling professional life. Though this can work for some, I ask that you consider opportunities you may not have considered before. For the life of me, I still don't know why I chose the path I did, other than to say that it felt right. After earning my master's degree, I took a job that took me out of my comfort zone and also paid me much less than I was making. I followed my heart, and it was the single best career decision I ever made. Since then, I've had the opportunity to experience, to experience care for dying patients something I consider then and still do today to be among the most sacred of experiences. Interestingly, this has been reinforced time and time again by the hospice patients I've cared for and spoken with over the past many years. They all have similar stories of plans changing, life events that, despite their best planning, put them on another course that was often better than they ever could have imagined. That has certainly been my experience. By taking another path, I've had incredible opportunities that never would have happened if I'd followed my plan or otherwise played it safe. I've learned so much from my graduate experience at Kent in the years that followed. But please don't misunderstand me. I do think it's important to plan as part of your life, much as you did when you planned and executed on that plan for graduate school. But don't have a life plan. Change is constant, and if I've learned nothing else from the patients I've cared for, this is one of the most important lessons of all. Next, kindness and compassion are critical. The most sacred moments I have experienced are with actively dying patients and their loved ones. These experiences are to witness love in action and to understand that healing that often results from carefully selected words and actions. It's the same healing and hope we can and should give to those we serve in our profession. Whether it's in hospice care or other areas of nursing, Patients, families, and others deserve compassionate care. 
For those of you who've experienced healthcare as a consumer will know, it's a challenging, frightening, and frustrating experience. And when patients and their family caregivers receive compassionate care, it provides comfort and healing like nothing else can. All that said, I will agree it's not easy to be the compassionate professional we always want to be. There are so many pressures, and life in general will throw us a curveball when we least expect it. Remember early February 2020? Who saw this coming? And COVID isn't the only challenge we've dealt with since then. The upheaval and absolute change we've experienced, both personally and professionally, challenged us all beyond measure. In addition, life didn't stop. Uh, some experienced COVID personally, saw friends, family, and coworkers struggle with their own diagnoses. And at the same time, death, divorce, and other life events didn't stop either. So how can we always be the compassionate nurse we want to be and that the patients and families we serve expect? There isn't a silver bullet, but a good start to self-care. It's talked about extensively, but practiced by so few. I know it's a difficult concept for some, especially those in the helping profession, and probably even more so for the wives, mothers, and grandmothers who have always given more to others than they've ever given to themselves. I see it played out in my own family and in the lives of countless colleagues every day. But care for oneself is critical for your own well-being and the ability to fully care for others. Please take time for you, and in the end, it will greatly benefit others as well. And last but not least, optimism is essential. Given all that we face today in the midst of a pandemic and during a time when some nurses are leaving the profession and many other events are impacting our professional lives, how can we be optimistic? I argue, how can we not? What has fascinated me in working with dying patients and their families is that despite the sadness and loss, there is great optimism and the recognition that life will go on for those left behind. Optimism in the worst of times is essential. I challenge you today to be more optimistic than ever about your own future as a nursing professional and to think optimistically about the future of healthcare. Now more than ever, we need to think creatively and innovatively to conceive a healthcare system that will provide care to us and those we love. But what do we want it to look like? What do we want it to feel like? And what do we want it to be? I encourage you to think in two ways, taking complementary paths that provide the opportunity to honor what works best and in fact strengthens the concepts of caring and compassion and combines it with innovative and creative concepts to build on what works well and use it to develop answers to our many challenges. How do we use technology to its best and highest use and at the same time maintain the healing aspects of caring and compassion? How do we combine high tech with high touch and create a future that is healing and comforting for all. To do so, we need to innovate at every level. We need to look at how others have succeeded and build upon and expand those achievements for all. Our entire nursing history is founded on innovation. It was innovators such as Nightingale and others that profoundly changed how we care for our patients and their families. And I challenge you to do the same to innovate, to change, and to be the light for those we serve, and to be an optimist in the most trying of times. I want to leave you with this quote. Life isn't just about darkness or light, but rather, it's about finding light within the darkness. I ask you to do that for yourselves, to find your own light, and then lead and help others to do the same. My hope is that you use the creativity, focus, and determination that got you here as your guide for making a profound difference for others. That you realize that change is inevitable, that kindness and compassion are critical, and that optimism is essential. Life isn't just about darkness or light, but rather it's about finding light within the darkness. I wish you only the best. Thank you, John, for your words of wisdom for our graduates. You are an outstanding example of what our alumni accomplish as leaders in our field. Graduates, you have worked hard to achieve your goals and acquired valuable knowledge and skills throughout your academic journey at Kent State. It is time to take what you learned and make a difference in the lives of your patients, 
their families and loved ones, and the communities where they live, just as John has done throughout his career. You are graduating from one of the most rigorous nursing programs in the nation. You will join the ranks of advanced practice nurses, nurse educators, leaders, and researchers who are dedicated to serving many patient populations by promoting health and wellness, reducing and managing illness, educating, improving quality of life, and contributing to the scientific advancement of healthcare around the world. A true mark of excellence at Kent State are the faculty and staff in the College of Nursing who have worked with you and lifted you up so that your true potentials could emerge. As you know, our faculty are exceptional educators who are committed to students and their professional development. On behalf of all the faculty who have touched your lives, congratulations. Now it is time to recognize our graduates. I would like to introduce Dr. Jay Hayes, Academic Program Director, who will announce the graduates by name. Good evening. Here are the names of our graduating students. Kuling G. Abi. Amal Mubarak Alawi. Kayla Alexander. Chelsea Anderson. Jennifer E. Anthony. Audrey Badovic. Mackenzie Ann Baker. Maggie Marie Baker. Marie Alserski. Stephanie Paige Gabrielle Barth. Shannon L. Baradin. Lisa M. A. Michael James Billock. April Eileen Berkmeyer. Jasmine Bonder. Kimber Ord. Nicole Lindbort. Jessica Michelle Brantner. Stacy Ann Bruey. Tiffany R. Bryant. Rachel Alexis Busey. Lisa T. Ursic. Elizabeth Cable. Misha Paige Kaplinger. Kaylee Marie Carlisle. Jenna Lee Carney. Catherine Carson. Jimsy L. Carey. Rachel Ann Seeger. Colleen Marie Chambers. Allison M. Chapa. Holly Marie Chostowski. Megan Ashley Chalky. Thomas V. Cemento III. Andrea M. Chuli. Kristen A. Coleman. Amy L. Coliano. Erica May Collins. Miranda Joe Corbin. Vanessa L. Cornell. Catherine Cottrell. Autumn Elizabeth Crisp. Jonathan Emmanuel Cunningham. Jennifer Karate. Colton Ray Dalton. Blanca Elena Daniel. Raquel A. Davis. Michael Robert Dieters. Rebecca Desay. Jordan Michael Deanna. Carla Victoria Dijon. Karen Ditchie. Darcel Marie Durant. Sergey Durenovic. Devin Page Edwards. 
Colleen Renee Eicher. Mary Caitlin Enderbury. Julia Forbes. Kayla Frank. Megan Courtney Fredericks. Robert Gallo. Lori Gieseman. Shauna Marie E. Gerke. Ashley Noel Gentile. Tiffany Lynn George. David J. Graham. Jennifer Dawn Green. Abigail J.B. Gretter. Michelle Denise Grinsley Tallman. Ann M. Hager. Andrea Hall. Dorothy Jean Hamilton. Cynthia Hardin. Brianna Marie Heilman. Corinne Nicole Height. Holly Helfand. Danielle Hedinger. Megan Danae Heinight. Sarah Elizabeth Hilliard. Abigail Briggs Hively. Matthew T. Heiser. Lindsay Marie Hurley. Brooke N. Hurd. Heather Hulali Jacob. Jeffrey M. Joseph. Madeline Grace June. Clara Marie Carlet. Vari Cachet. Susan Ketchum. Molly Marie King. Carrie Kolk. Matthew James Koviak. Carolyn M. Cray. Meredith Rose Lalak. Stephanie M. Lane. Aaron C. Latsko. Madison Patricia Lapore. Carrie Marie Lingro. Daniel J. Liptak. Caitlin Marie Locke. Sheena Marie Lachetti. Sarah Jane Long. Shira Alexis Maltzmacher. Eliona Manto. Laura Rose Mattingly. Susan Lorraine Maine. Melissa McCarty. Brittany Alexis Medina Mitchell. Kirsten Annalise Meese. Mary Ann Meyer. Michelle Carmen Mikovich. Kristen M. Miller. Jennifer Lauren Lee Miller. Robin Mitchell. Alexandria Nicole Monroe. James T. Mooney. Yvonne McLaurin Moore. Aaron R. Morabito. Catherine Elizabeth Mulig. Leslie L. Newberger. Lauren Amy Nicholson. Aaron Joseph Nicholson. Stephanie Nussbaum. Jacqueline Nidza. Alexander Nidza. Sarah Elizabeth Okolish. Megan M. O'Neill. Christy K. Pandria. Nicole Marie Pavella. Amanda E. Peligra. Kaylin Pember. Alyssa Lapidus Perchinski. Sarah E. Pierce. Thomas James Piranek. Carolyn Petro. Katie L. 
Poroshkov. Charlene R. Pulaski. Andrea Denise Presley. Kelsey Alexandra Pretty. Justin D. Picara. Marna M. Revlock. Laura Lee Rice. Jamie Lee Rudd. Christy N. Rostasil. Alyssa Rose Rowe. Krista A. Rabulki. Deborah L. Rudy. Hannah S. Russell. Danielle Nicole Saltzman. Rachel M. Scacchetti. Alex Daniel Sharippa. Bonnie L. Sugar. Catherine M. Shannon. Shireen Shadi. Amanda E. Shields. Victoria Christine Shockles. Jennifer D. Smith. Alexandra Taylor Smola. David Dirksen Stabler. Darren D. Stevenson. Jennifer Stiles Green. Leslie Delia Stromanger. Oriana Shuglia. Andrea M. Sudik. Kristen Marie Sutton. Christina Marie Svoboda. Emily Rebecca Talmage. Elizabeth Taylor. Rachel Tenninger. Bridget Kathleen Terracina. Brooke Noel Thomas. Allison Courtney Thompson. Tanya Leanne Tillett. Sarah Tachinsky. Lindsay Tomlin. Claire Torje. Teresa Trivisano. Brittany Tucker. Brittany Marie Err. Amy Louise Vaflor. Sandy Vokurka. Rebecca Marie Wankata. Emily Christine Marie Welsh. Mark Wurstler. Julie A. Widmar. Kelly Danielle Wilkinson. Brittany C. Williams. Andrea R. Williams. Jonathan Curtis Wills. Leslie Brooke Workman. Lorna O. Wright. Lisa Young. Michael Ryan Young. Allison Taylor Zurawuk. Congratulations, Class of 2021. Graduates, we in the College of Nursing are privileged to have been your faculty and mentors. We hope to hear about your future achievements, successes, and the exciting work you will do throughout your careers. It means a great deal to us to hear from you and to learn about the impact you are having on nursing practice, education, and research. Now please enjoy a brief slideshow of our students' photos. Congratulations again, and go Flashes!